How are you today? Fine. It's fine for old 95 here. Good, good. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us. No, I'm happy. Um, my name is Doug Mitchell, and we're going to be talking to you today. This is. Are you from a press? You're from a press. Well, we have a. We're from just a small company that helps other small companies tell their story on the internet and such. And so we're helping out the ABI by having some conversations with their guests and speakers and see what what why they're here and why they uh, what they're enjoying about the conference. So. So, uh, Harold, uh, and your last name is Brock, right? Brock, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, give us a little thumbnail sketch. Give us a little idea of who you are and what you do and what brought you here right now to this convention where you're going to be speaking tomorrow? Tonight. Tonight. That's right. You're tonight. Well, um, it's a long story. <laughs> well, we can condense it into, you know. I started out um, as an apprentice to Henry Ford first, the founder of Ford Motor Company. He was my apprentice foreman. Okay. And he had a small staff of people, about six people around him. And, uh, and, um, and, and of course, then I came out of his school. They had a school back then, the first uh, high school in the factory of a 1,200-acre factory okay. producing a total car. So <clears throat> I, that was my background of education. And I went to college at nighttime to finish up my practice with. <clears throat> and I, I worked for Henry Ford. and and became the chief engineer of tractors for him back in 1939 and designed the first little uh, tractor that was called a utility tractor which mm -hmm. had a hitch on the back, three-point hitch, uh, and that of course set the standard for all tractors built worldwide today. Mm -hmm. And millions of those tractors have been built. And <clears throat> then uh, Ford reorganized, Mr. Ford died and he mm -hmm. was my mentor. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the new management were XGM people. They were not interested in tractors. They were car people. Mm -hmm. So I uh, got, got discouraged with them. And, and the rest of the industry were waiting for the patents to expire uh, because Ford, the little tractor, was taking 25% of the total business of the industry. Mm -hmm. And so when the patents expired, well, uh, the chairman of the board of John Deere called and asked since he was involved with Ford tractors before he married into the Deere family, mm -hmm. <laughs> would I come and help him redesign the old two-cylinder tractors? So I came to Waterloo then in 59, and we redid the old tractors and changed everything except mm -hmm. the, the paint. You know, it's the only thing we kept. And <clears throat> so I've become worldwide director of John Deere's tractor engineering, and, um, and I stayed there until I was 70 years old and finally left. I figured I'd been there long enough. And mm -hmm. Decided to take I, a little time I, off? Well, I had 28 years with Ford and 25 with Deer. Wow, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, that's my background. And, of course, then I, I've been very active in community colleges and uh, got an award last year for being the outstanding community college trustee of North America. And I did want, what did go to San Diego to pick it up. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it was a nice award. And it recognized all of the good work of community sure. colleges, which I'm real proud of. So that's my brief background. That's great. Well, I mean, that's an amazing story. And, of course, I had an amazing relationship with Mr. Ford because, because he was, his mentor was Thomas Edison, who I also met. And being, being an apprentice to him at his knee, well, uh, he was not a socialite, but he had friends that always come to visit with him, mm -hmm. important people like, mm -hmm. like Edison. and. Harvey Firestone, who made his first tires for cars, and, and George Washington Carver, our, our black scientist from Iowa mm -hmm. State. And, and so I, I was a pleasure to meet all these important people and during that period of time. So that was a real benefit to me. And, um, and so I learned a lot from all of those people. Not, well, I wasn't, wasn't a close associate of those people, but I worked with them, uh, Carver, and um, mm -hmm. because Ford got into promoting the soybean originally, you know, soybean mm -hmm. was just a cover crop that was plowed under. We didn't have <laughs> right. chemical fertilizers then. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and Mr. Ford started the biotech uh, and tried to get the farm to raise something we could use in that car instead of steel. Mm -hmm. We had no plastics back then. And so we did make parts for the car out of soybeans, but then plastics came along and killed that. It was right. cheaper. So anyway, Ford, Ford was involved in a lot of different things, and, 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 he, and he didn't take any 
um, put any value on money. Because uh, mm -hmm. when I ask him for a little more money, well, he'd, <laughs> he'd say, well, money's not the objective of life. Of course, he's a billionaire. <laughs> Uh, and I was getting okay. 13 cents an yeah. hour. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he says, liking your job is the important thing. Do you like your job? I, I love it. Well, okay, don't worry about the money. And um, so, but he said, it's what you do with your money to build a better world for others. So he was never a, a greedy person. He always wanted to use his money and, of course, produce the first car that the workers could buy, mm -hmm. double their wages, and was criticized for that and had no stockholders. And, Right. So he, when he got rid of them because they wanted big dividends, and he said, "No, I'd rather reduce the price of the car." Yeah, yeah, revolution. So that was his his philosophy, and he carried that through right to the time he passed away. Uh, and of course, the industry now today, Ford has been reorganized under GM people, and it's in the same kind of situation. Although Mr. Malali, the new mm -hmm. chairman of the board, mm -hmm. is an engineer, which is unusual because. The auto industry has never let an engineer be the top person. Well, it's always been a finance person. That's right. Well, they usually, the stigma would be that they don't know how to run a business. They well, don't know how to know, make stuff. And engineers know how to solve problems, but it takes time. <clears throat> so the, most of the boards wouldn't take time to let the engineer solve the problems. They had to do something to right. make money every six months. That's right. Please the So, uh, so Malali is, and, and William Clay Jr., None of the Ford family really wanted to take over the business after the old man passed away. Mm -hmm. Henry II, I had him as a trainee, by the way. <laughs> he took over because he had to. Uh, but none of them were really interested in running the factory, but they didn't want the company to go under. And, and William Clay Jr. has now got Malali, who's an excellent engineer, and got Boeing out of trouble. Mm -hmm. And so he, they're doing well. And uh, so far, they haven't taken any government money. And, yeah, uh, they're yeah. Doing, doing okay. well, that's that's a good thing. So anyway, that's my background, really. Yeah, and what's the what is the topic of your talk tomorrow? How is it going to tie well, together? Tonight. And I, oh, I'm sorry, I, tonight. I, I keep I'm saying that. I'm trying to tell the group what has a major uh, advances in both the ag industry mm -hmm. and the auto industry during the last 80 years that I've been involved in. It. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'll I'll cover some of the things that of personal experiences with Mr. Ford. And also, you know, point out that um, the ag group have kept their mission and succeeded. That We started with, with horsepower and a seventh with a farmer, and, and now farmers have a 500 horsepower. They're set in the seat with global positioning. And, Drives itself. And, and, and so the, 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 uh, the mission of the ag group is always to produce food with less labor. Mm -hmm. And so they've gone from a one and a seventh horsepower up to 500. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, then we're blessed with having wonderful food. And they've, you know, done, uh, eliminate much of the hand work and harvesting and so forth with all the inventions of the ag group. Mm -hmm. so, so they kept their mission now. Now the car group, I'm pointing out, has lost their mission because mm -hmm. Mr. Ford set the mission that you should have a low cost product that would get you from A to B, get rid of horse and buggies, and no roads. And uh, he was never one to have any more models than the one cheap model. Right. Uh, and then today, when you look at our advertising, and GM Ford and Chrysler, they have these big four-wheel drive vans. They always show them up on a mountain or down in a valley someplace and mm -hmm. where you have to go to justify owning it. Yeah. But we do have roads, you know, but they end up in the shopping centers. That's right. That's right. So they lost their mission. Now they're in trouble. Yeah. They got greedy and greedy, really. They lost their way. Yes, they did. So that's primary what I've got to try to tell them. That's going to be uh, great. And probably personal. I think most of the young ladies that are, more, are probably more interested in the, in the personal sure. experiences I had with Ford and, uh, and uh, not so much of, about engineering development. Excellent. And so I'm not going to talk too much about engineering, although when we started the car business and tractor, engineering was just in its infancy. It wasn't even taught in schools. In the right. Of, you know. And we had limited materials and limited knowledge of those materials. You were just making making your way the best now, you could. Now, of course, we have all oh, wonderful analysis, and we can predict now when a part's going to fail. That's right. That's exactly right. So we've made lots of advances in engineering. 
you've seen 94 years of it? <laughs> yeah, 80 some years. So wow. I'm real proud of it. And of course, I've, I've been made a fellow great person of both those societies for invention, <coughs> which is good. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you very much for stopping by and spending time. Um, I appreciate you uh, coming in here before you have to give a chat tonight. Hopefully, you can go have something to eat and relax a little bit. Yeah, okay. I'm going to have a pretty good crowd, apparently. Looks like it. They're all waiting for you. Oh, really? No. Oh. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, I'll be interested in what I say, really. I, yeah. I just wing it. And don't. Nothing wrong with that. I'd You're entitled. <laughs> I think it's better than just trying to read a speech. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, well, Mr. Rock. You. So Have a good day. <coughs> I should go downstairs. Let's do a quick portrait of you. Is that okay? Yeah.